I'm Robin Skeets, I'm the General Editor of the European Journal of Archaeology and uh, I've been asked to say a little bit about one of my current research projects. So what I've chosen to uh, speak to you about is uh, a research project running in central Sardinia all about the cultural life of caves. Now this project ties in with uh, a broader interest in the human uses of caves in the central Mediterranean region, particularly for the prehistory uh, of the area. But I suppose what this project is about is trying to put these caves in context, uh, a group of uh, caves in the uh, territory of Seulo in central Sardinia. I was introduced to the area by a geologist, Sardinian geologist, called Yusi Gradili, who uh, a couple of years ago discovered not only caves filled full of human bones, but also one really rare kind of cave, a painted Neolithic cave, which also had uh, a human skull uh, fixed to the cave wall with, uh, with flowstone. The first is to try and characterise the diversity of the natural caves in the Seulo territory, uh, and to try and explore how diverse their human uses were. Um, and have been between the past and the present. The second aim of the project is to look at how some of these caves were, have been selectively modified and transformed uh, into sacred places uh, by groups of people during rites of passage during prehistory. The third aim of the project is to try to see these caves in context and to try and figure out to what degree these caves were um, uh, and, and the activities performed in them were connected to or marginalised from broader patterns of life over space and time. We've undertaken a lot of uh, cave survey in the area and we've discovered that there really is a, a very surprisingly you know, significant diversity of caves in the area, from vertical caves to horizontal cave systems to tunnels, sinkholes, vertical fractures and, of course, rock shelters as well. Um, according to the radiocarbon dates we've gathered so far from a whole variety of caves, we're, we're interested in about ten of the caves that seem to have been occupied in prehistory. And they seem to have been occupied between the Middle Neolithic, from about, let's say, 4,250 calibrated years BC, up until the uh, Final Bronze Age, up until about 1,000 BC. One of the earliest caves uh, that we've identified, and perhaps the most special of the caves, is the Middle Neolithic cave called Gruta de Longufrezu. And this cave really uh, works well for our second research question, which is all about the modification of caves into sacred places uh, and their use in rites of passage. Now this cave, it's a, it's a tunnel-shaped uh, cave, it's about 15 metres long, and we excavated at the back of this cave. and in this cave we found a, a whole series of archaeological remains, Neolithic remains. Human remains, a few disturbed inhumations it looks like, with also uh, later on the secondary removal of some of these bones, including the, the uh, grouping together of skulls and long bones and their placing in niches in the cave. Uh, another important uh, find that we made in this cave was a greenstone axe and it seems to have been placed within a um, a stone circle, uh, a specially constructed stone circle. And the third special feature uh, at the back of the cave, very close to where the greenstone axe was found, uh, is this rather rare, uh, a small group of anthropomorphic uh, cave paintings, uh, presumably also Neolithic from, the from their style. Moving on slightly in time, we move to one of the largest caves in the area. This is Gruta de Isjanus, named after the fairies that are thought to inhabit the cave. And this uh, dates, its occupation dates mainly to the Otsieri period, uh, which is the final Neolithic, uh, in, in uh, Maltese sequence, uh, dating to uh, about 3800 to 3550 BC. And it's a very different kind of cave. It's a large uh, cave complex, large natural cave, and it's got multiple entrances. And the Otsieri culture deposits that we found, uh, uh, we've excavated in three adjacent chambers of the cave. 
each one slightly different in character to the other. So in the upper chamber, there are no human remains at all that we've found, in contrast to Longufrezu Cave. But there's loads of pottery, arrowheads, ornaments, tons of animal bones, and loads of burning, and they appear to have been burning branchwood. In the chamber adjacent to this, at a slightly lower level in the cave system, uh, there are similar deposits, but we also found this really lovely uh, figurine head, stone figurine head, that's comparable to other examples, uh, again, belonging to the Otsieri culture, Sardinian Otsieri culture. And then in the third chamber, a third adjacent chamber, it's a very small chamber, surrounded by stalactites and really enclosed. Again, pretty similar deposits, burning, pottery, animal bones and the like. Uh, but also much more decorated pottery in this particular space, including the um, foot of a tripod vessel. Moving on in time again, is Janus, this, uh, this large cave complex, was occupied in the early Bronze Age. We, we've excavated the innermost chamber, so the deepest part of the cave system. And the innermost chamber was uh, occupied right at the start of the Bronze Age, and here the human use of the cave changes quite significantly. Just, it looks like just one or two broken vessels, pottery vessels, probably a bowl or two, and just one or two animal bones as well, domestic animal bones, selectively placed in the innermost part of the chamber. Moving on in time again, we get to the Middle Bronze Age, this period dating to between about 1900 and 1400 BC. Well, two caves we've excavated that, that date to this phase, uh, a cave called Isbitularis, which is a small uh, ossuary cave essentially, a burial cave, and a rock shelter called Sukanisoni, which is only about a few, you know, maybe 20 metres beneath the uh, Isbitularis burial cave. And their relationship is rather interesting. They do seem to be a, have been used as a pair, these caves. Uh, and their, their radiocarbon dating is very close, only about 100 years difference uh, between the dates. And um, what we found is that, well, essentially, the argument is, according to our uh, bone expert Jessica Beckett, is that bones could have been brought from the burial cave slightly higher up the hill down to the rock shelter at Sukanisoni, where there's just secondary burials. And indeed, we've got one, uh, two vertebrae that seem to be from the same uh, individual with the same uh, back problems, essentially. And uh, one bone was found in the Ossuary Cave, one bone was found in a, in a special deposit, secondary deposit, uh, in the rock shelter. Uh, so it could be, well be movement of human remains from one cave to another. So, starting with Isbitularis, this is a small burial cave. Uh, we found really large quantities of human remains, uh, and in fact, uh, excavations before ours, let's call them excavations, they were rather where they were undertaken by these two medical students in search of uh, human skulls and bones, where they found a, a trepanned uh, Bronze Age skull, Middle Bronze Age skull, with three trepanning holes in it. We also found ornaments, uh, body ornaments, a few obsidian tools and uh, arrowheads, and uh, a few pottery sherds as well. Uh, moving down slope to Sukanisoni, the large rock shelter, uh, it's, it's a really completely different space here. It has a really wide view of the landscape. It's quite exposed. But what, where we excavated was actually underneath a, for, uh, an extinct spring line. And uh, underneath what seems to be a, an artificial cairn, at the bottom of this, we found uh, two human skulls and a pile of long bones. And this vertebrae that I mentioned earlier, quite possibly having been brought down from Isbitularis cave. Um, and again, a few lithics and pottery and so on. There you have it then, our, a very quick uh, guided tour of our, uh, our project uh, with some photos uh, taken from the last three seasons of Fieldwork. I hope you've enjoyed it and above all, I hope you re uh, enjoy reading the European Journal of Archaeology.